we got to start with Aston Villa and Arsenal. There's undoubtedly a symbolic value to the fact that they go there and they win 2-0. Mm-hmm. Um, do we make too much of a big deal out of it? Or did you see a performance where they said this was substantially better than a year ago? Uh, I don't think they were at their very best, particularly defensively. They had, uh, they had one moment in the first half where they were caught on the ball and uh, Ollie Watkins should have scored. It was a, a fairly easy chance. Um, not the only easy chance not the only easy chance he had another one later in the second half where he should have done better Raya made a good save but it wasn't a great save I think um, Ollie Watkins should have scored it it was really this is the one where for those Mr. Doyle you're talking about the Mm. one where yeah He's on the ground because the ball had hit the crossbar. Comes back out. He made a save to push it onto the crossbar. Yeah, so he made a great save to push it on the crossbar. That was a great save to me. Yeah. The second one, he's on the ground. He gets up, but obviously, when you get on the ground and you get back up, Mm. you know, it's pure reaction. You're limited to what Mm. you can do. The Watkins can just put the ball anywhere. Yeah. And he puts particularly when he's going with his head because you've got more control with your head than you have with your foot. So he's he can and he's running straight onto it. He could head it into the corner or head it on the other side. He headed it straight at Ryan. But from a player's perspective, since Mm -hmm. you're emotional creatures, Mm -hmm. this is okay, this guy does not Emery does not have any kind of hoodoo over us. Mm -hmm. We beat him. Roll on. We're be- we're stronger this year, and we're going to take City to the wire and beat them. Well, there were still some good things about Arsenal. You know, I, I like the fact that he's he's played with Partey as the holding midfield. That meant Rice could play a little bit further up the field because I think he can do both sides of the job. The combination down the right hand side is going to cause every team problem. Ben White making forward runs from his right back position. Odegaard with those little reverse passes. Saka is always a danger. He, 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 you know, uh, Dinia did okay against him, but it's it was a good battle. Arsenal are a good side at the moment. And I just think they need that extra bit of confidence to go and, and, and win the league. And this game will give them that bit of confidence going forward. Thank you for not saying they need Ivan Tony or recognized no. striker, 30 goals a season, all this nonsense. Not to mention that maybe Kai Havertz will mm. score 20 mm. goals a season. Um, on the Villa side, I don't think Villa played badly at all. I do no. think you have a situation where you have a guy who mm. scored a million goals and delivered a million assists last mm. season in Ollie Watkins' For whatever reason, he I said he was poor last week, mm. poor again this week. Mm. Obviously, you persevere with him and you just wait for mm. him to get out of the funk, right? Yeah. Uh, the first chance, probably lost his confidence with the first chance. I mean, it was a, it, for him, that was a fairly easy... And and, it, and Emery would have been so pleased with the way they pressed the ball. They won it back off Arsenal in a good area. They had the 2v1, an opening for, for Ollie Watkins, and he didn't take it. So that may have lost his confidence for the rest of the game. But I think Aston Villa played well. They're going to be a decent side. And Emery... Has always had a little bit of a thing over Arteta when he was manager of Villarreal. They outplayed Arsenal in in the uh, uh, Champions, uh, not, not it was the Europa League, wasn't it? Um, and last season he did it again, but that was a, that was a bonus for Arteta that they got in, they got Trossard, Trossard on the field, which was a good substitution because Martinelli wasn't having the best of games. Trossard came on, different sort of player, scored the opening goal, and from that moment on, Arsenal then played really well. Um, when you look at when, when, when you look at Villa and, and you know, later we're, we're going to get into, oh, sorry, sorry just on Arsenal, mm. Mikel Marino on his way. I think mm. that's huge. We're going to talk about that mm. later on. But uh, you're with me. Mm. This is mm. this is a player I think that they really need to complete the squad. Yes, because uh, what does it mean for Thomas Partey? Thomas Partey will probably be the player to go out because it means Declan Rice will probably right. drop deeper. And Marino will play as that left-sided midfield player in the midfield three. It means you have alternatives. You have alternatives. And it's not just Partey and Jorginho, both of whom are in yeah, their yeah. 30s, to complete yeah. that, that trio. Plus Marino, I think, is, is versatile. And a goal scorer. He can be a goal scorer with balls in the box. Um, yeah, it's good. Mm. I, I, think, I think he's shown that. But with Villa, um, we're going to get into more on Gavin mm. Jules' podcast. Just give me straight off the bat, percentage chance that they finish top four. Uh, I'm going to go with, because they're in the Champions League, I'm going to go with 35% that they would get in the top four. All right, let's stick with Villa because there's different things going on. Obviously, they, mm. they, they, they've spent a lot of money. Last year, they had the season they had. Unai Emery getting praise left, mm. right, and center. I think they played well in this game. I think if you're Unai Emery, mm. you're disappointed with the result, but you say, look, we took it mm. to Arsenal. Um, we showed that we were better than Arsenal for long stretches. Mm-hmm. Arsenal are, along with City, the cream of the Premier League. Yep. That's where we are. Um, however, you have them at 35%. And mm-hmm. I'm going to guess that you have them 35% because you assume Arsenal and City are dead certs. Yes. Liverpool are still ahead of mm-hmm. ahead of them. And so you place Villa in a bucket 
with Manchester United and maybe Spurs and Chelsea. Um, Newcastle? Possibly Newcastle. Possibly Newcastle. Newcastle. Not, and you arrive at 35%. Yeah. But this suggests to me that out of all those teams, you might have Arsenal. So you might have Villa ahead of the other ones if you're giving them 35%. I think at the moment you know what you're going to get with Aston Villa. They've had the manager now for a couple of seasons, Unai Emery. And he's, so uh, Manchester United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they, but, but with Manchester <laughs> United, they might have had the same manager, but you're still not quite sure what you're going to get from week to week. Right. Uh, Newcastle uh, had a poor season last year. Are they going to be better this year? The squad suggests they should be better. Uh, not being in the Champions League makes it easier for them. Uh, Chelsea, we still don't know. They had a great result at the weekend, but they were poor the previous weekend. I saw them all through pre-season where they didn't seem to understand what they were trying to do. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of sides that, that could get into that top four, but not quite sure about at the moment. Whereas Aston Villa have that sort of base from which they can play from. I think with Villa, my concerns would be, one, you never know what PSR is going to mm. throw up. Mm. Uh, and obviously, I'm not, I don't have any inside information. I know the situation they were in. It's, not, it's nowhere near as transparent mm. a process as, for example, as La Liga, where mm. you, know, you can kind of go week by week and yeah. find out yeah, where yeah, everybody yeah. is. Um, I think that could potentially be an issue. I think there's, as you mentioned, the Champions League more of an issue. Mm. Um, but this is a really, really well-drilled team. Mm. And I think back to, man, not that long, when they were doing well last season, mm. this conversation with Jules, not to rub it in because Jules isn't here. Mm. And he's telling me how it's Douglas Louise and, and, uh, and Abu Bakar Kamara that mm. they're absolutely critical together with McGain uh, and this is the secret mm. and blah, blah, blah. And, okay, Kamara has obviously been out for, mm. for a long time. Um, Douglas Louise is gone. Mm. Tielemans and Onana, I thought, looked really, really well. Yeah, Tielemans yeah. is, a, is a good footballer. Onana is a good athlete. You know, and if you want people to close the ball down, Onana is, is a box-to-box -box player. I think he was, he's energetic. Tielemans can get on the ball and make them tick. So that's, that wouldn't be a problem for me. They've done things well. Unai is a good coach, but there's, there's some flaws to their game. If they don't quite get it right, we saw that last year when they held a really high offside line and if they didn't So one ball, game, what, the one where they could just Yeah, but there was, there, was two, there was two or three games where yeah. they did that and they got away with it. And if, if you just switch off 5% and the midfield players don't work quite so hard or you're bypassed uh, too easily at the front, then that puts extra pressure and make decision-making on the defenders. And last season, their decision-making in those situations wasn't as good as it should be. That's the area that hope Unai Emery has sorted out this season. Do we think that, um, just in terms of the wingers and, and how that's evolved, obviously, Zaniolo gone, Diaby gone, by the end of the season, they weren't important performers, but mm. are there enough, do you think there's enough options there to play the way he wants? Yeah, I think he does. I think they're, they're a side that... Uh, can play several different ways in terms of keeping the ball because he likes his team he likes his teams to keep the ball and play through midfield they will stretch the pitch by going wide and he's got one or two players that can play out in those areas they've got a centre forward that can run in behind so they can stretch the pitch as well they've got a centre forward who can also come and link up the play and get midfield players running beyond him so there's a whole load of ways they can play as long as they don't make the same mistake week in week out defensively by trying to play too high a line and not not going back with runners when there's no pressure on the ball. That will be the key for me this season. All right, let's talk uh, Arsenal. We mentioned Mikel Marino. Um, Fabio Vieira has gone on mm. to Porto. I, just on the Fabio Vieira piece, I was never a huge fan. I think this is a good place for him to mm. regain his mojo. You, get, you would get a concern if he can't get into the Porto side mm. regularly because then at that point, you know, you're wondering yeah. what's the point of him being there. Would he have been better off going somewhere else where maybe, you know, he can get more minutes? I mm -hmm. think that's all TBD. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned before that it could mean that, you know, Declan Rice mm -hmm. sits more and Marino mm -hmm. is the one to go more forward. I'm not sure he sees it that way. Okay. Uh, I, I just think you would lose. I just think Declan Rice kind of. So are you, su are you suggesting that Marino won't get in the team every week? Because if no. Declan Rice plays further forward and Partey plays as the holding midfielder, or Jorginho plays as the holding no, midfielder. No, Marino does. I think Marino... Marino plays as the holding midfield player. Yeah. Well, I never saw him play that role for Real Sociedad. 
he's not a holding midfield player in the sense mm. that I run around and win the mm. ball. But against most teams, I think he's mm. going to do what Jorginho was asked to do, which is pick your passes, unlock situations. I think he feels more comfortable with that. But did, but did, did you see him do that nice. for Real Sociedad? Because they had no, Zubi no. Mendy who played but that they role. Play, but, but he had Zubi Mendy. Mm. But Declan Rice is not Zubi Mendy. So I, I don't want Declan Rice to pretend he's Zubi Mendy so that I can accommodate... Hmm. I, like I, I think he is committed to this four. But, when, but when he played for West Ham, Declan Rice, he was more of the the holding midfield player, who right. It got, was on a counter attacking team, though. Yeah, and, I, I still think, and I think you lost a lot of mm. what makes Declan Rice very good. Mm. And I don't think Declan Rice has necessarily he's got other skills, but I don't think he's got the playmaking passing and the ability mm. to control possession for one of the problems but, that England had at, if, the, at the European Championship. Precisely. I mean, look. Hey, one of the things, one of the reasons I admire Arteta is that he comes in with an idea mm. and then it doesn't work and then he goes to something else, right? We, we saw that last year mm. when, when he started with um, Havertz and Udegaard mm. behind Gabriel Jesus mm. and he says, wait a minute, this isn't mm. working the way, the way I wanted to, right? Because so, when, he, when he did that, when he played Havertz as the left-sided midfield right. player, that's when he wanted Declan Rice as the holding player. Right, because he just wanted Declan yeah. Rice in the team and I think we saw that you lose a lot of Declan Rice. Yes, mm. you can ask him to to go and, and defend and basically be a, a third center back in mm. front of the back four. But I don't think you're getting the full Declan Rice experience when you do that. And I also don't think that it helps you because the other, when other teams go and, and park the bus, again, I'm not sure Declan Rice is the guy to unpick that. Neither of the center backs is necessarily going to do but that. But one of the things that Marino can do as that left-sided uh, midfield player in a, in, a, in a three, playing as the further forward, as he proved in the European Championship, and he has done for Real Sociedad, when balls go wide, which you, you have to do when you're playing against the pack defence and you get crosses into the right. box, he's a midfield player that can come and, and, and head the ball. So he would be a threat in those situations. As would Declan Rice. Yes. I, I would say Marino's better in the air than Declan I would Rice. Say, I would say he is, in terms of going and attacking the ball in the opposition's penalty box. I don't see Declan Rice do that too often. Uh, I defer to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. It's, it's no, a, I, it, it's interesting. It's, I, it's I, interesting I had something in my head that that's how I, I thought he was going to do, but you're, I mean, you've added the, uh, something different. Look, if, if it is sort of this 4-2-3-1 mm. setup, mm. it could also be that they take turns going yeah. forward, yeah, um, yeah. depending on the situation. I think what it also does, having that left footer in there, is... I think Zinchenko coming into the middle, I mean, it looked like Zinchenko was probably out of his plans, but I wonder how that's going to mess mesh with Calafiori or, or Timber if he still wants that. Well, Timber did it in, in the game against Aston Villa. He, exactly. came, he came into that sort of semi-holding right. midfield position, and I think Calafiori would be the ideal player to do that. Um, if you've got Merino there, does that then become slightly redundant? Or do you then use Marino differently? I, I would say if, if, the, if the player coming in from the wide area, which seems to be the left side, left back for, for Arsenal, it's, it's the right back for, for Man City, but it's the left back for Arsenal, then it would suit if you had Declan Rice as the other player because he would then move to the slightly to the right with his right foot and the left back would move into a sort of left, left holding midfield position. That's and got more Mico balance. Marino, like, Mico Marino is making... left footed Yeah, that's what I would say. That's in my in my head. That's the picture I've got. This is the value add we get with Stuart. So that's the picture I have in my brain. Uh, If we have to point to, you love pointing out flaws and weaknesses, right? Yeah, that's how one gets better. What are Arsenal missing right now? Like, if if you wanted to make, like, all right, if you had to identify potential pain points, things that could go wrong, right? And I don't just mean Saka getting injured, Mm. but one thing that comes to me a little bit that I would wonder is I'm not I don't think Martinelli has been at the level he was at no two years ago no um, obviously there are other there's, there's, mm. Strasser, there's other players mm. I guess Gabriel Jesus could go and do a job for you there as well when he returns the trouble is when you're looking to win the title you don't want people just to do a job do you you want people to I mean, Gabriel Jesus is a very good player right? yeah he's a good player so you want him in the side and if Havertz is fit, Havertz is your centre forward. Yes. Right? So I'm, I'm thinking about is that I mean is that a potential? That's a potential. Uh, Trossard, 
uh, has done a very good job. He's, his goal record for Arsenal has been excellent, but he's a different sort of player to Martinelli. Uh, and if you are having your left fullback come in field, Trossard is the sort of player that when he's playing on the left hand side, he wants to come in field and join him with a centre forward. So that makes them slightly unbalanced, which is why you could go back to Jesus as playing as a, an out and out wide player and trying to go down the outside of people. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that could. He wants Martinelli to be at his best because if they if they've got pace down the left hand side and they've got the trickery of Saka down the right hand side, that's a good combination. But Martinelli hasn't been at his best always. Um, Smith Rowe is gone. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing Marino is also the alternative to Udegaard in terms of you know if you should, if, mm. we're talking about t- of depth mm. here, obviously. Mm. I mean, so if we do, if something happens to Udegaard and Saka, I think Arsenal are really going to struggle, of right? Course, yeah, but. Last season, you had Smith Rowe, or at least on paper going into the season. Mm. He said, all right, well, maybe he can do some of the things that, that Udegaard does. Mm. Or maybe Fabio Vieira, then he got injured and yeah. stuff. Right now, who is the alternative to Udegaard? Um, they haven't got one. and Because uh, uh, Odegaard, is, Odegaard is the sort of player that can see a pass at the moment. He can pick a pass at. He's the Kevin De Bruyne of, of Arsenal because he's the one that unlocks defences. He's the one with the clever passing. Most of the other players are good, very good footballers, but they can't disguise their pass. They can't see passes that Erdegaard can. And he's key for their particularly lock, unlocking the, the defence down that right-hand side. So I don't think they'll ever replace him. They'd have to come in with... Marino is a player that, again, I think is more forceful than Erdegaard, but not anywhere near a good passer of the ball. Um, so that's... Yeah. I don't think you can ever replace your, you know, Man City would never replace Kevin De Bruyne because he's one of the best passers of the ball in no, world football. But what I'm what I'm saying is, if you want to keep the same, well, you want obviously you're not going like the guy starting mm. because he's, he's better the best. Than yeah, the, yeah. But I think <clears throat> generally in an, an ideal world, and there's no such thing as an ideal world in football, which is why we're nitpicking here. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal are. You want to have a situation where if your starter is out, the guy who comes in for him plays the same way, not as well, but plays the same way, so that. You don't have to make adjustments yeah. everywhere throughout the eleven. If, if, if you see mm. what I'm saying, right? You want that same type of player, ideally. So to I'm going to I'm going to throw something in the uh, throw a spanner in the works here. I would play Havertz in that position because he's the closest player to pick a pass out. Exactly. Uh, uh, Declan that, Rice is not going to be that sort of player. I don't think Marino is that sort of player. Havertz would then have to come slightly that's the deeper. Alternative, isn't it? That's the alternative. To but then, then you're looking at Inkeke. He play centre forward, yeah. Kedia, who keeps getting rumoured, he's mm. getting linked with with moves mm. and stuff. I don't they obviously think don't think he's quite good enough. That's why they to keep, start. Yeah. To start. And, and Jesus has been inconsistent and had lots of injuries. So that's that's an area that would worry Arsenal. That's your other pain yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Defensively, I thought that they were lacking depth in the past. Mm. Now, now, with Timber fit, yeah. real. And, and Timber can play centre-back as well. That's well, not, well that's When he was playing that. for the Dutch side, he played in a back three. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but between Timber, Calafiori... Gabriel. They've got enough players. Saliba, yeah. you're, you're sort yeah, yeah. of there. Yeah, yeah. I think on the right as well, there's a nice balance. I think Tomoyasu can, I think it's a really, really good player. Yeah, he's good a good player. player. He's a better 1v1 defender than Ben White. Ben White's doing well I, attacking-wise. If, 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 I was a, if I was an opposition's manager, I'd be I'd be getting uh, a lot of balls in behind Ben White and, uh, and almost getting them to wind Ben White up because he's still, I think, can be slightly vulnerable defensively. It looks like Zinchenko's going to stick around. A lot yep. of people had him pegged for a move. Yep. I certainly predicted it. I thought he would go because you look, you know, with Calafiori back. Mm. And Timber, you know, you have perhaps a more defensive uh, left mm. back. Could Zinchenko reinvent... When we talked about sort of that mm. playmaker midfield, I know obviously Marino's come in, but... Could Zinchenko kind of go back to basics and play midfield, which is what what he was, originally. which is what yeah. he did for Ukraine. What he did yeah, for. I think he, he's more of a, a, a left-sided player rather than a right-sided player. Erdegaard is happy playing on the right because he can reverse balls. I'm, I've never really seen Zinchenko. And you've play got too there. many left footers there, Zinchenko, yeah. Marino. Like, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. You know, I, I think Zinchenko's sort of uh, game time will be limited this season. And you wonder then. Is there a point to keeping him around when the window closes? But yeah. uh, time will tell. I, 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 I'm excited. I think Arsenal are better. Mm. I think when City are at their best, they're still mm. a class apart. I'm not saying the, the gap closes automatically, but no. City have point, pain points too. Um, so for my money, it's going to be tight again. It's this very, year. very tight. 
All right, enough Arsenal. How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, Jules. Or Gab, should I say. Sorry, Gab. I, 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 we sound the same. We look the same. You're always forgiven. Kylian Mbappe makes his home debut for Real Madrid as they beat Valladolid 3-0. Robbo, you were there. It's the other new striker who gets on the score sheet. Yeah, Endrick came on oh, probably with uh, seven or eight minutes to go. Um, Mbappe, I didn't think, had his best game. Uh, certainly, didn't, certainly didn't have his best game. Uh, Endrick came on, uh, dropped his shoulder, went on his right side, shot with his right foot into the near post. The goalkeeper should have done a lot better, but it was a great start for him. That was his uh, debut at, uh, at uh, the, the stadium. Goalkeeper that, Carl Hein, on loan from, from Arsenal. Arsenal, Estonian international. And we looked him up. He only played once in the in the under twenty one cup or whatever it is, you know. So yeah, he, he's got like twenty caps for Estonia. So respect, respect. respect. Um, last week I suggested that maybe Endrick should. Go on loan or play mm. with. Now I'm not so sure because I, is this still something like? Do they need Endrick this season, or are they better off bringing him along very slowly? I think he's not going to get a lot of game time this season. And as we saw with one of the other substitutes, they've got a ready-made uh, player that can come on and affect the game. In Brahim Diaz, who did brilliantly and scored the, the the second goal and made the third goal as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that Endrick will get that much playing time because they're not going to leave Rodrigo out. They're not going to leave Mbappe out. They're not going to leave Vinicius Jr. out. And they've got Bellingham to come back into the team as well. I, that's right. I thought they looked more balanced with Schooler in there than Bellingham, but obviously they'll have to find a home yeah. for Bellingham when he comes back. For me, the concern is still in uh, central midfield. Tony Kroos is, mm. is missed against teams. They were put in the first the half. They were very poor against a team that just wanted to sit deep. Yeah. Now, Arna Slot celebrated his Anfield debut with a 2 0 win over Brentford, Gab. Were you impressed? I was impressed. I thought, they looked, mm. I thought Liverpool looked really, really mm. good. I thought they could have scored more. Brentford, obviously, even without mm. Ivan Tony, who's mm. still mulling his move to Al Ahly or wherever he's going, um, there you go, they're still a tough out. And uh, I thought they played well. Mm. It was a nice counter from Diaz. Mohamed mm. Salah looked sharp. Um, and I like. The fact that it's a little more possession oriented, it's a little more precision oriented. Mm. I like where Sobosla is playing. I think it's kind of like mm. attacking center right midfield mm. or whatever. Um, I like what he's doing. Sticking with Liverpool, though, there's there are three free agents to be: Virgil Van Dijk, Trent Alexander Arnold, and Mohamed Salah. How many of those guys do you think will be back next year? And which of the three is hardest to replace? Well, I'll answer the first question: Who's the hardest to replace? Mo Salah because it's difficult to, to get somebody to come and score as many goals as he did and play with the same pace and, 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 and drive that he does when he's playing at his best. Uh, I think Van Dijk is a, an exceptional player and a good leader and be the player I'd want to keep at the club. Of uh, the three. Of the three, yeah. because Mo Salah can only do it for so long because he's, his main attribute is his pace. That's going to that's gonna die at some point. Or he's not going to be quite as quick and quite as effective. So they also gonna, have other good strikers. Then they have other good strikers. If you're going to be paying a lot of money for right. a, a, you know for a player of his age, Van Dijk can play for a, well, for several more years right. at his quality. The player I would let go if there was one of those that you could let go would be uh, Trent Alexander Arnold. You know, while he's a very good passer of the ball, for me as I've always said, he can't defend and. You know, he's been allowed to get away without defending by Jurgen Klopp for, for a long time and defended uh, in terms of, oh, it doesn't matter because he's a great passer of the ball. If you're a right back or a holding midfield player, you need to have a defensive brain as well. And he hasn't got that. So I would say that Trent Alexander-Arnold would be the player that Arna, Arna Slot probably wouldn't worry about not uh, keeping. I think this is a huge call to make. He's mm. mid-career, he's younger. Mm. <clears throat> Once you decide not to extend it, and, mm. and I can understand why they decided mm. not to with a new coach mm. coming in, obviously you're going to, you know, you're going to have to commit mm. a lot of money. I thought maybe there was an outside chance mm. that Real Madrid might roll the mm. dice with them. They may yet do so if they mm. can get him as a free agent because Real Madrid need a succession yeah. plan on the right. Obviously, yeah. they have a hard, uh, not getting any younger and. Have Obviously, an ideal player for Real Madrid as well because he wouldn't have to do quite so much defending and they'd hit, keep hitting those balls out to him and he'd get getting crosses into the box. He'd be an ideal player for them. Now, no like Lautaro Martinez, but Inter roll uh, to a 2 0 win over Lecce. Gab, business as usual? Well, it could be the week one where they made individual mistakes and self destruct mm. despite playing better. I think they just focused on. Uh, not screwing things up. It was interesting. We saw the TNT mm. front line, Mehdi Taremi and Marcus Turam. I thought it worked well. I, I, I think Taremi, I wasn't, you know, a free agent, whatever. I thought I was just coming a paycheck. But no, I, I think he puts himself about, gives him a different dimension. Mm. 
I think they look good. Inter Miami beat Cincinnati 2 0 last night with two goals from Luis Suarez. Lionel Messi wasn't there as he's reportedly nursing an injury. Uh, Robo, some are critical of Messi and his lack of availability. Mm. He hasn't actually played, I think, since before the Copa America, June 1st. Um, and St. Louis City uh, sporting director Lutz Fernandez had some pointed words, not specifically about Messi, but I think maybe more about Marco Royce, who visited mm. and chose not to, chose he didn't want to live in St. Louis. Hmm. Well, I think I think he's got a little bit of a point, but what did he say? He actually said that if you only come and want to play in Miami and LA and New York, then you're coming for a holiday. Um, now, if I if I was saying I wanted the best, if if I was selfish and I said I want the best for me, uh, and I want to play as well as I can every time I go on the pitch, I'd say I'll play every every two weeks, once every two weeks. I'll miss out the away game and I'll play in the home games. Uh, and that would guarantee almost that Lionel Messi would be at his best every time he played. So he may be doing it for professional reasons and not just going for a holiday. So well, whatever it is, Inter Miami have the best, they have the most points in MLS. Yeah. They're number one. They've done it without yeah. Messi. Yeah. If he wants to look after his body and be sharp mm. for the playoffs, yeah. I, I got no issue with that. No, no, I, no. Now, Swiss broadcaster SRF reports that FIFA is suing Google over search results. Gab, what's all this about? So this is a funny one. So basically, sorry, I mean, that's right, it's serious. This, this is mm. like the Swiss Nationals, like the Switzerland's mm. BBC. So I presume the story is accurate. Um, FIFA have taken uh, suing Google uh, because if you type in certain things in the Google search engine, they say it turns up a website which is libelous towards, towards FIFA. Uh, reportedly, it's an obscure website. Um, mm -hmm. I have an idea what that website is, and at least when I Google it, it doesn't come up straight away. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe different situations. Switzerland have tough libel laws, uh, tougher than um, the, yep. than other countries. So this is a thinking because obviously FIFA could have sued Google anywhere. It's not like Google's mm -hmm. a Swiss company. Um, it's kind of funny because when you I think one of the upshots of this is that people are going to wonder about this and ooh, what horrible things about untrue things about mm. FIFA are, you know, are, are mm. out there or on this website and they might actually search for it and it might go up the Google rankings. And it, so it may have the, you know, unintended uh, yeah. uh, consequence. The, yeah. The so, effect. yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not sure this was the, the wisest choice, but it could just be a, a test case for FIFA. Robo, we loved it so much. We brought it back. More quick hits. A late, late, late Joe Pedro goal helps Brighton get past uh, Manchester United 2-1. Robbo, I may be in the minority. I thought United played okay mm. and played a hefty price for individual mistakes against a good fo footballing side away. Am I wrong and deluded? No. Because Related to Eric Ten Hag, perhaps? No, No, because no. they, uh, at times, had more of the play. They dominated the play. They created some good chances. And I presume as you're talking about individual mistakes and missed chances that they right. had. Okay, so Maguire on the first one. Yeah. The collective brain fart on the second time. Oh, on, so... John, the, yeah, John the, Pedro yeah. makes himself... But these aren't systemic things. These are individual mistakes that are so extreme. Yeah. And then the Zerks, they disallow goal. I don't know... I don't even know if it's accidental or if it would have been that easy for him to get out of the way. He, he'd slid, he, he was sliding in, so and he'd already slid before the because he'd gone for the first one. So I, I think it's, I, I, th I think he's, he's unlucky. He's unlucky. Exactly. That's right. that one was unlucky. Okay. Diallo had a good chance, which he should have scored much earlier. So uh, you put these things together. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was disorganized. There was disorganization for the the second goal where they defend the first ball. And as so often happens, then they don't get the. But shape. that's not a system thing, is what I'm driving. No, at. that's not a system thing. That's but it, but it also it's something that you, that coaches don't work enough on. You defend that. You you set yourself up for the defender set play or a ball into the box. You clear that, and then what do you do as the ball goes out and it's going to come back into your box? And that's where they got their shape all wrong. They were overloaded to one side, and it left Jao Pedro free on the far post. So there was mistakes that were had. But I didn't think they played that badly, as you quite rightly said. And Kevin. look, and, and this is with Mount Unfit, with Rashford. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that is. That's not. I don't think that is Marcus mm -hmm. Rashford. I think it's somebody impersonating him on the wing. No Hoyland. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I think they're they're an okay team at the moment. Madueke manages to insult the city of Wolverhampton before scoring a hat trick against Wolves as Chelsea break out in the second half and win six two. Gab, your thoughts on that? 
And you might say he added injury to insult. Mm. See, see, see what I did there? No, he, this poor guy, he wrote something disparaging about the city of Wolverhampton on Instagram. He thought, I guess he was messaging somebody privately yeah, in yeah, a yeah. private group and said he put it publicly. So he got booed. <clears throat> and then in the second half, he scores a hat trick. It was 2-2 at halftime. Chelsea wins 6-2. Mm. Um, more broadly on Chelsea than Medwake, mm. it is amazing what happens when you go mm. back to a system that makes sense mm. for the type of football you want to say, right? Mm. Two up and down wingers running up mm. and down in Madueke and Mudrik. Mudrik was fine, was terrible, as he often is in the first half. And then you bring in Neto, does the same thing mm. up and down. Boom, that works. Put Cole Palmer attacking midfield mm. where he belongs. Uh, put Enzo back with the two. Mm. Or Lavia out. And all of a sudden, this is a more rational team. And they win. And they win convincingly. And I just want to see Nico Jackson stop being stupid and winding up the opposition. <laughs> no, honestly, he's going to pay a big price. They don't have other... Unless you want to see more Mark Guillaume, yeah, which I don't yeah. think many people no, do. No. Um, he needs to avoid suspensions and just be smart. Mm. He's playing better. Yeah, absolutely. Robo Jaden Sancho is unwanted at United. Raheem Sterling unwanted at Chelsea. Amortization is magical and can generate funds out of nothing. Uh, would a swap actually make sense if you could make the numbers work? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> I don't think that Raheem Sterling uh, it would do too much at Manchester United. I don't think he's the sort of player they'd be looking for. Sancho, likewise, I think he, he needs to go I mean, abroad again. Sterling at United would contrib contribute more than Sancho does since Sancho yeah. never plays. Would Sancho can contribute more at Chelsea? Well, I'm like, you should have thought about this before mm. you signed Pedro Neto and mm. Joao Felix, maybe, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it, it might have been a good thing at the start of the season with a, a fresh outlook for Sancho going to, to Chelsea, but I think the only way that Sancho get, gets his career back on track is by going abroad at the moment because it's going nowhere. You know what's silly? If you slap 60 million valuations yeah. on both of them and you swap them, uh, you generate PSR money out of, out of thin air, at least for a season. Mm, okay. Barcelona are still without six senior players, plus Danny Olmo, who was, can't register just yet, and they've lost Gundogan to Manchester City. So were you impressed that they won 2-1 at the weekend against Athletic Club? Right, just to give you some context here, in addition to all the guys who are out from Gavi to, 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 mm -hmm. to De Jong to Araujo, um, Fermin, who's 21 years old, mm -hmm. has one top flight season under his bench. Yep. He was the second most experienced player on the Barcelona In terms of bench. games or, or, or uh, Just age. experience. No, yeah. whatever. Whatever you want to call it. If you exclude the, the, the goalkeepers, right? Mm. Um, the most experienced was Eric Garcia, who of course is Eric Garcia, and therefore not very good. Um, and they had three 17-year-olds starting. Mm. Um, I thought they played really well in the second half. Mm. It, I think it's encouraging. They're buying into what mm. Hansi Flick wants mm. them to do. I think Lewandowski looks sharp. Now, I don't mm. know how long it's going to last with Lewandowski. But I do wonder, can you imagine if they hadn't played silly buggers with the levers and spending all their mm -hmm. money and said, maybe put a bit more faith in the kids? Well, I saw on. them against Valencia. I went to Valencia last week and I thought they played very well, particularly again in the second half where they they play more forward-thinking football. They're sharper with Are their you, And you're a Mark Bernal guy now. Mm, yeah, he, he did okay. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's still got a bit of work to do, but he's a, he's a decent player. I, I, I think... I think they're in a good place. I don't know how big the squad is. I don't know how it's going to last. Who knows if Olmo's going to even stay fit mm. and you go through this trouble to mm. register him and then you know, with his injury record. And give I, a bit of credit to Rafinha. You know, everyone keeps saying he's going to go on his way. He's going to be going here. Every time I've seen him play over the last year or so, he's been effective yeah, for Barcelona. He has. Manchester City go a goal down at home against Ipswich, but then score three inside of 50 minutes and route to a 4-1 win. As Erling Haaland bags a hat trick, they also hit the woodwork a couple times. Mm. Same old, same old. Yes, in terms of... Uh, but what I was pleased with about Haaland, I've been very critical of Haaland over the last few weeks and, and months where I don't think he gets involved in the play. I'd, I'd see him just being a goal poacher. At the weekend, he looked like the old Haaland where he was making runs, he was done it. The goal where he runs, makes the run through the two centre-halves, heads it past the goalkeeper and puts it in the back of that. That's what I want to see more from Haaland. So same old, same old, but uh, good performance. Yeah, is that the, uh, the fourth goal was also, yeah. was also good for yeah. him. Um, it's, it's crazy. In August, I think he's got like 27 yeah. goals and 18 games in his career. For but I want to see him enjoy his football, get more involved and do the things that we know he can do. And then he'd be, he would be, you know, the world-class striker. 
That's I think he is, man. You've got the Brian and Bernardo Silva there. Do you want this but, big, lumpy Norwegian coming back and getting in your grill? I didn't say getting coming back. Making those runs down the side, making more runs, getting, getting hold of the ball when it's played up to him by the goalkeeper. Anyway, forget that. The Vincent Company era began at Bayern with a nervy 3-2 win away to Wolfsburg. A bit messy, wasn't it? Yeah, so the, the first half, I thought they looked, they looked really good. Yeah. Uh, Sasha Boy or Boy or whichever way you mm-hmm. choose to pronounce his name this week uh, you know he looks like Danny Alves down mm-hmm. the right it's fantastic they take mm-hmm. the lead and then Boy gives up a stupid a stupid penalty in the second half mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're pinned back um, and they actually it looks like the wheels are totally coming off and they got to need Thomas Muller to come off the bench, he created uh, the, the this is the second goal mm. without touching the ball, just by wreaking havoc, just by being there, forcing the own goal. Uh, then, of course, they got the, the late winner for Serge Gnabry. There is work to do. Mm-hmm. Good news is, I think, um, I think they're on the right way. But Harry Kane fit. Fitter. Harry Kane was involved in all three goals. Good. He doesn't look super sharp. The finishing should have been mm-hmm. better in the first half. But I mean, give him time. Um, Tottenham uh, romped to a 4-0 win at home to Everton as Yves Bissouma scores a great goal. Robo, do you like them more with Son at center forward or Solanke, of course, was unavailable uh, to lead the line, but presumably will be back? Uh, I like Son up front because... Really? Because I'm not... i am never been a Solanke fan, unfortunately. Uh, you he, don't like big, tall, skillful strikers who uh, score oh, lots like of goals? I like big, tall, uh, skillful striker that scores, but he hasn't done enough of it over the years. And he had one good season last year. He scored a ton of goals in the championship too. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. No, I don't think he's going to be a, a major success for Spurs. Uh, and Son is a proven quality striker I, who can make runs in behind and score goals. He's a good finisher. So I was I looking at this. First. They have so many wingers and mm. so many attacking mm. options because obviously there's Brendan mm. Johnson, there's Otto who started it mm. really well. Kulusevsky. Timo Werner still there, Kulusevsky. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering if he's leaving himself that plan B of mm. Sonny through Richarlison, of yeah. Sonny through the middle, just in case the the, the, the great Solanke experiment yeah. doesn't, uh, doesn't quite work Which out. Which it might well not do. Now, Milan slip up badly as they lose away to Parma 2-1. Gab, Paolo Fonseca says their defensive attitude is hard to explain. Yeah, so Fonseca already under fire after the draw opening Mm. week. Um, What does he mean by defensive? So what he's talking about is, if you watch the highlights of this game, Mm. they give up two goals on the counter that are pretty much identical, right? Yeah. Milan are attacking, they're trying to be positive. It's almost a three versus one at one point and a two versus well, one. And then there's a counterattack and they struggle to get back. I thought Theo Hernandez was, was at fault for, mm. for both of them, as was Yunus mm. Musa. But there's a switch of play and it's almost like carbon copy goal, the guy coming in through the left-hand mm. side to, to score. Dennis Mann, uh, mm. the man, there you go. Um, I, I, I think this is problematic, but I think it's because, and you know this better than I do, you have to be able, if you're attacking and you lose the ball, you have to be able to stop the counter straight away, whether it's a tactical yeah. foul or, mm. or counter pressing. You can't just blame it all on the defenders. Mm. And I think this is what he means by defensive attitude. But, dude, don't say it's hard to understand. you got to fix it. Mm, absolutely. Atletico Madrid get off to a good start at home as they beat Girona 3 0. Robo, more generally, it's all changed at the Chivitas with uh, Julian Alvarez and the only living Sorloth in captivity up front, Connor Gallagher in midfield. Robin Lenormand, uh, and perhaps Clement Langlais, who seems to be on the verge of signing mm. for Barcelona at the back. You like what they've done? Are they contenders? Uh, are they contenders? I still don't think they're contenders. I don't think they win the league. Um, but uh, Alvarez, I think, is a very good player. Are they, they're, are they, they're better than last year. Right? They're better than last year. Saw I mean, a lot. Only played, like that? Last week, saw a lot played the first half and got taken off at, at half time. So he, and he just after he scored the equaliser against Villarreal. Uh, I'm not sure Alvarez is quite as good a player as other people believe he is. I think he's a, he's a, 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 a good player, but I don't think he's an outstanding player. Conor Gallagher, I think, would do a good job for them in midfield. They need some legs in midfield. Um, and Le Normand proved that he was a very good defender uh, at the European Championships. Longley is well past his best, so I don't think that is a, a good move. Uh, I still think they'll be third behind uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona. I, I'm in, I'm genuinely intrigued. I like what like mm. Samuel Lino. I think has gotten off good, to, yeah. to, to, to strong mm. start. Um, I'm not that down on the legs in midfield. Barrios mm. can run all day. So can yeah. Marcos Llorente and Gallagher uh, too. I think that you know if they play Llorente in midfield, they are quite often playing exactly. In different we positions. don't know where that guy's going to go. 
I do. I'm with you. I'm not an Alvarez guy. No. I think. I think compared to you know, if you if you go Alvarez Sorlot mm. versus Depay Morata, mm. do you necessarily? I mean, I'm not sure you're improving. Head? I'm not sure you're improving. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but yeah, Lenormand helps at the back, but like, you know, yeah, any more than that. Okay. Now, this was back on Friday, Gab, but PSG destroyed Montpellier 6-0 and Jao Neves and Bradley Barcola ran absolute riot, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, after getting the scare when he played all the, the, mm. the, the, the really, really young kids, now he just mm. played the marginally younger kids. He played the old guys like Jao Neves, I think is 19 or, or whatever. Mm. That guy's a player and a half. I mean, yeah. that between him and Vitinha, the, the range of passing <laughs> in the middle of the park is special. Bradley Barcola in the Fuego. Um, he's running around saying Killian who he can finish he provides assists he's yeah. always positive uh, I think Paris Saint-Germain look really really good mm. I think they have a lot of options now my big question is we'll get to, we're going to talk about Seaman later obviously he's on the market I think they're waiting for the mm. last minute if they do make a move mm. you got a chance to get a Seaman 55 60 million does it did, first of all, does he fit Yes, I think he does. I think he'd fit any f- front line, you know, because he's a player that can do all things you want from a centre forward. Yeah, he can run, he can hold the play up, he can score goals, he's decent in the air. Is he a Luis Enrique guy? <sighs> is he going to be clever enough for Luis Enrique? Because Luis Enrique is all about the, the thought and, you know, your, your movement and your touch. Uh, I still think you need to sign Randall Colum Wani. Yeah. Surely he's more clever yeah. than Randall Colum yeah. Wani. Yeah, so I, I think he'd be a good signing. Ossiman is a, is it is sign a, him? I think that's. that's a, that they've got an outstanding. That's team. a game changer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Also back on Friday, Robbo, Bayer never losing uh, all over again as they win at Gladbach thanks to a penalty in the 11th minute of injury time. Mm-hmm. A penalty which Florian Wirtz misses, but then the ball happens to be there for them. This is sorcery, this is witchcraft. Xabi Alonso has clearly done some kind of yeah. deal with yeah. Satan or some other demonic yeah, yeah. entity to be this good for this long, yeah? I'd like to go along with that, but I think what it is is they're a very good team. And even when it went to two all, when it was against the runner play a little bit because they were dominating the play in the second half, they didn't change what they were doing. They kept the pressure on. They actually won the ball higher up the field. They kept on playing balls into the box and they looked a threat. And it, and because the, the added on time is because the... Um, fans uh, of Borussia Mönchengladbach threw flares onto the pitch and there was smoke everywhere so we had it and ad- added on 10 minutes so they actually lost the game for their team in the end but honestly by Leverkusen deserved to win they were the better team by quite some, far, some way and I still think they're going to be up there challenging this season Did Wurtz look okay to you in the game? Yeah, he did well. He, I, he, he, played, he did well. He, okay. he, did, he did okay. He went past people. He, he, I, I thought he was. I, I thought he was off the boil. He, now, which again made me even make me even more impressed. Mm. <laughs> He's yeah. like, okay, whatever. I, I didn't get a great game, but then he it, happily goes. He, he, yeah, he did enough. He, yeah. Yeah, he did enough to say that he's still a, a very, He's good, a very player. good player. Yeah. Napoli bounced back from the opening day defeat with a three 0 win over Bologna. Gab, that was a quick turnaround for Antio, Antonio Conte. And I'm just going to say something else. Didn't he do that with Chelsea when he first went there? They lost 3-0 at Arsenal in about the second game and he changed the tactics and the next, and they didn't lose for the next 35 games or whatever it was. I, I don't know that he changed the tactics too much here. I think mm. he gave somebody a uh, kick up the backside and mm. also he got the best for Atskelia. That first goal, mm. that, that pass, mm. oh. absolutely, absolutely delicious. Um, now, of course, everybody's you know happy again mm. and they're still... Going to do some signings. And I want to mm. get your view on where these guys fit. Because, all right, with McTominay, that's one guy. They're ready to put $25 million tonight mm. that on the table. I guess from United's perspective, if Manuel Ugarte yeah. comes, like I thought, then maybe you can shift yeah. McTominay. Uh, Jules were here. He would just be laughing, falling off his chair because he does not rate McTominay. But you tell me, does McTominay help Napoli? <sighs> Could you find a better way to spend your money? I think you could find a better way to spend your money. What about Billy Gilmore? Uh, Billy Gilmore had a little Slovak Billy Gilmore there in Lobotka. Don't they do the same thing? Yeah, but I think uh, Lobotka is better than Gilmore. Gilmore uh, just hasn't... (sighs) He just hasn't developed, I don't think, as a player. What I saw from him is when he first got into the Chelsea team. Uh, you're going to say Lukaku as well, aren't you? Well, I Luk- will say Lukaku, Luk- yes. The into Lukaku was magnificent for Antonio Conte because Antonio Conte got the ball into him Conte as much as possible. Him. And he was, he, honestly, he was unplayable, for I would say, for a season at Inter. But it's been two years since that he was that unplayable 
uh, man. So can Conte get the best out of him again? Well, you if tell he could, me. If he could, and he plays, so? to, he plays to his strength, he probably could get him to be a, a major attribute so for them. So on Lukaku, they have a deal in place with Chelsea. They have an mm. agreement. The agreement with Lukaku is taking a little bit longer. It's over image rights. I would imagine they're going to go and, and bring this home because mm. it's in everybody's interest mm. to do so. And if you're Chelsea, look, nobody else is going to take Lukaku. No. So maybe you knock another million off the price if yeah. this is what it takes for Lukaku yeah. to sign. Um, but the interesting thing for me is Victor Seaman. Yeah. Because now they come out with this story. Oh, look, you know, al Ahly, big, big offer from al Ahly. al Ahly, who actually are one of those teams that don't have a, a, a very fancy center forward. Osimhen in the past has said, I've got no interest in going to Saudi Arabia. Um... It's crazy to me the fact that they have a 120 million relief clause on them, and every day that passes, the asking price for a seaman mm. goes down. We talked mm. about Paris Saint Germain mm. before. People have also suggested Chelsea. I don't think it's going to happen because a seaman has a big salary that doesn't really fit Chelsea's yeah. business model uh, at all. Um, if you're a seaman, you just stay put and wait for the phone to ring from Paris on mm. August or somewhere else on August yeah. 31st, right? I would say so, yeah, because he doesn't want to go to Saudi Arabia and PSG would be a, a, an ideal fit for him, I think. And if it doesn't, and you tell me we're with this totally screw up the dynamic of the squad, if it doesn't, then September 1st, Osiemen, actually maybe a little after that because there's a mm. national break, Osiemen comes back and says, hey, guys, I'm here. Can't go anywhere else. Mr. Conte, you want me in the squad? Can I help out? And we like try to find for a home for, home for me in January? Or are you really going to go and punish me and, and, and yourself for the next four months? Well, it'd be madness if he does that, Antonio Conte, because he can get out of uh, Ossiman what he got out of Lukaku when yeah. Lukaku was at Inter. Because, and well, say, the, the whole play is going to be based around you. We're going to find every way to get it into your feet and down the side, and we're going to get you to link up with you know, whoever is, is around you. And you are going to be the main man. He could be absolutely outstanding for Antonio Conte. I mean, you're going to lose him for nothing in mm. June. I think if he doesn't move, you reintegrate him. Mm. You can at least get something mm. in January and mm. also make your team better, at least for half a season. Mm. Absolutely. Bournemouth and Newcastle draw 1-1, but Rabo and Doni Raola is furious over the Dango Watara goal that was disallowed by VAR. Also, I want to ask you, how did Joy Linton not get sent off first? In fact, let's, let's deal with that one first. The Joy Linton on Neto, uh, to me... That, that, that's a red card. That's so, always a red card. So, first of all, if you if you intentionally stop the goalkeeper playing it out, you know, and get in his way, it's a yellow card. Right. If you then combine that with the forearm, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, almost the across the... clothesline. Is it close, straight close, out that's of the, the, that's professional the wrestling? Yeah, cl the clothesline across the goalkeeper. That's dangerous as well, or, or nasty. So, it had to be a red card. Not just that, but Joel Linton is a large, muscular, mm. strong man. Mm. Like, that's actually dangerous. Yeah. I know the goalkeeper. I don't Neto's not a little guy yeah. either. Yeah. But that's, that's dangerous. That's uncalled for. I, I think this is like... But there was two yellow cards in, in, in one movement there. First of all, stopping yeah, the exactly. goalkeeper playing it early. And secondly, the, the, the clothesline. So and on the Watara move... So, for those who didn't see this, basically, the, the cross comes in. Watara heads it. VAR looks at it. And VAR comes to the conclusion that the ball... You know the whole thing with the with the elbow and mm. the armpit that mm. the ball struck his arm, and so mm. because you can't score mm. with your hand, mm. uh, the goal is disallowed. What I don't understand, I wa I sat there rewound, watched the video, I watched the, the, the so did I. It up. Yeah, how can you tell where the ball Hit. strikes? You can't. No. No, and it looked quite. It was. It was almost on the shoulder, wasn't it? High up the arm, which I thought was. And also the way yeah. the ball comes off him, I'm mm. assuming. Kind of the bone on his shoulder. Mm. Is, I'm sure he's a big muscular mm. dude, but the bone on his shoulder, I'm pretty mm. sure, is going to be harder mm. than his arm. Yep. And you look at the way the ball comes off, the angle it comes off, the speed at which it comes off. How can you possibly conclude that it came? Having off his given arm? the go having given the goal to start with, I think the goal had to had to remain. Because, the, as you said, the VAR couldn't be sure exactly where it came off. You couldn't mm. see the uh, uh, clip after clip after clip, replay after replay. You couldn't be sure. So if the goal was given, it should have stayed, I think. Yeah, and this is not something, by the way, which the referee mm. can, can review and make up his own mind. Mm. In these situations, it's only the mm. VAR. Uh, I don't know. I hope these aren't the two points that send Bournemouth down. Yeah. 
Now, Juventus kick off in a few hours against Verona, Gab. Nico Gonzalez is on board and Atalanta's Coop Miners is uh, apparently on his way too. Can they challenge for the title this year? Ooh, that would be something from Thiago Motta. I mean, look, a brand new midfield with, with Turam and um, Coop Miners and, mm. and Douglas Luiz. Uh, Nico Gonzalez, I think, is an extra mm. dimension out wide. I think mm. he's a phenomenal footballer uh, supplying the crosses. I think they're going to be really, really good. Mm. Uh, and the question is, you know, to what degree do they buy into the, the, the whole Thiago Motta mm. ethos, you know? Um, that, for me, is, is the big question. I mean, I think finishing second or third is already progress. And the fact that they've changed their mentality mm. with these younger players and with the... Uh, with the style of play, um, I also, since we're talking Juve, we should talk Federico Chiesa as well. He's in that, you know, Osimhen bucket, train mm -hmm. left to train for himself. We talked to him on, on the last show. He's got a year left. He makes a lot of money. What does he do? He's been linked to Barcelona. I don't, I mean, the last mm. thing Barcelona need is no, another. Is <laughs> no, <laughs> he's that guy. I mean, he's a good player. Um, I, again, I think this is a situation where if he doesn't move, this is where you expect the club mm. to be grown-ups and say, okay, Federico, you're here. It's in your interest to play. It's in mm. my interest, even though mm. everybody says, ooh, Thiago Motta doesn't want him because they just dump it on Motta. Thiago Motta wants a fit Federico Chiesa. Yeah, yeah. Of course he does. Who wouldn't, right? Especially if you're, yeah, if you're yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's not like you've got uh, a, a, you know, Mbappe and Doku on the wings, right? So you become grown-ups about him and you reintegrate him in the squad and I think he can do a job for you as long as he stays mm. fit. It's his interest to be... And he in. does what the coach wants. Because that's, that's yes. what happens sometimes with players that want to get away. They'll you reintegrate them into the team but then they don't do what the coach wants. He'll go disappear I, somewhere I else. I don't think Federico Chiesa mm. particularly wants to get away. I no. think he wants a contract extension mm. which he's not going to get because he makes stupid money mm. and he's always... you know, And he has a poor injury record. Mm. But there's a very good player there and this is one that's going to evolve between now and, uh, and and the window shutting Friday night. Uh, Jamie Giddens scores twice for Borussia Dortmund as Nuri Shaheen gets off to a winning start against Eintracht Frankfurt. Robbo, were you impressed? Uh, yes, very much with Giddens and these goals. I mean, they, he, he, the first one was a great counter-attacking goal. He made a couple of good decisions. Uh, he's got plenty of pace and power. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't get more game time in, re in last season. When I, whenever I saw, went to Dortmund and saw him play, he often came on as a sub. And he changed the game in certain ways. And I'm thinking, why, why doesn't he start the game where some of the other players that weren't affecting the game uh, got starts? So I was very impressed. I'm pleased he's done well. And they were two excellent goals. You're impressed with him? Are you impressed with Dortmund, though? I was impressed with him. Uh, in Dortmund, they conceded one or two chances as well. Yeah, to, one to or two. Yeah. That Faris Chay, yeah. honestly, early miss of the season. Yeah. The XG 0.84, something stupid mm. like that. Um, there was no Girassi, but no. I don't think... I don't think they're smooth at all. I think it's going to take a long. It's going to take a while. Dortmund aren't going to be challenging for the title. I don't think. I, you've got five new players mm. who are all going to play big roles. Four of them were there. Girassi wasn't. Um, Shine has his work cut out for him. I think. Now, Gab, you and Jules told us about uh, Pablo Dybala uh, was on his way to Saudi Arabia. Instead, he's still at Roma, but that didn't help much as they uh, lost at home to Empoli two one. Is that the first time that Empoli have been there and won? I think I heard that said somewhere. What did you make of his decision to stay? Yeah, so there's, there's two separate pieces. I mean, Roma's performance, mm -hmm. um, they need to move the ball quicker. It's fine to be mm -hmm. attacking, but if you're going to do that, if you're going to take chances, you have to zip the mm -hmm. ball around. Dybala staying is interesting. Um, some people are wondering whether that $25 million a year offer for three over three seasons uh, for Al from Al Alcatia was even real. Mm -hmm. I think it probably was because we know the agent who put it mm. together, Fali Ramadani, and he has a really big rep. Um, I don't think he needs to make things up. Equally, uh, would Roma have rather had the money than play Dybala's wages this year? I don't know. I don't know how Dybala and Matias Sule, for example, mm -hmm. are necessarily going to going to work together, given that you know they both like to mm. go over to that to that left hand side. Um, also, Dolphic needs crosses, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, do those guys deliver you crosses in that way or are they different sorts of mm -hmm. players? I don't know how well this team no. fits together. Look, it's great. And Dybala right now, they paint it as like, oh, look, he made... 
Yeah, he's still making a ton of money at Roma because his salary, you know, gets mm. goes way up this year, steps up this season. He gets to live in Rome and play in Serie A. That's I say this with the greatest respect. I don't even know what town Al Qadzia is in in uh, in Saudi. I mean, I don't know. If it, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't, have, the, a lot doesn't of have the same ring about, uh, about it as uh, Rome, does it really? No, no, no with all due respect. Uh, Rabu, <laughs> Samu Omorodion scored eight goals for Alaves last season. And until he couldn't agree personal terms a few weeks ago, Chelsea were willing to spend $40 million on him. Now he's going to Porto for $15 million from Atletico Madrid. Does this make sense to you? Uh, no sense whatsoever, and apart from you'll, you'll probably tell me it's about financial fair play and whatever. But it, in terms of football, I saw Samu play many times for Alaves last season. He had one or two excellent games. There was other times where he looked very clumsy and not particularly good. Uh, and you know, how could Chelsea have thought that this was the player? Well, because that, they needed yeah. to send Connor Gallagher and needed to get something in return for him, and it's a more, the magic of amortization. Yeah, so it's, it's the so job. You're, you're now principle. explaining the situations, but uh, yeah, in terms of football uh, yeah. terms, it's, it, that was never going to be a good sign for Chelsea. And you reckon he's going to move the needle for Port? Uh, just I, for me, you go from forty to fifty million. For me, I, I even Atletico Madrid, mm. right? Why are you spending money on sore loss? If you need a mm. big, tall striker, yeah. why spend money? And you like this guy. Why spend money on yeah. sore loss? Why not just have Omorodion there? You can mm. showcase him in the Champions yeah. League. Um, if you really think he's that good. In the end, you end up letting him go for $15 Because he's too raw, too inconsistent, and they couldn't trust him. Uh, but they're still going to get some money for him. <laughs> Yeah, I know you and Jules are big John Texter watchers. He's Leon side lost at home to Monaco 2-0 and have yet to score this season. More worryingly, Lekeep reports that they need to raise 75 million euros in sales in the last week of the transfer window or they will be in big trouble with the league. Yeah, with the league with the DNCG, I think it is. It's the um it's kind of the sort of the control body mm. France's equivalent of uh so there's a body that does like kind of their their version of PSR. Mm. Um yeah, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know if this is accurate. I like keep, obviously, normally very well sourced. If you have to raise $75 million in the last week or you fall foul of these regulations and you've spent $35 million on Niakate from mm. Forest, now I know you're a big Niakate guy. Oh, absolutely. $35 million, mm. that's a lot of money. And it's not just him. They also signed Abner. They signed a bunch of other guys. I, I'm really wondering, sorry, how are you running your club? And then you do this, and then you want to buy Everton, a club which has no history of financial no. woes and profit and oh. sustainability rule issues, right? Um, yeah, I, I to me, this is a big sort of flashing warning sign uh, that they need to, that, that, that I, I don't know, again, I, I don't, JT, I'm not, we're not picking on you, but honestly... At every turn, this, but the yeah. Fogo, like the, the pretending, you know, like the Blitzer and Harris offer you was mm -hmm. 155 million yeah, for yeah. your shares. And no, but you value the club at something stupid and you want a lot more money. Than, dude, like, relax, get some, get some perspective here. And, 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 I, and I'm sorry, if, if you need to go and cobble this money, because you can take over Everton. Where are you, where are you going to lead Everton in the situation they're in? Mm, not very far. I mean, I, I don't know. Again, if there's a good explanation, you've got a permanent invite to join us here, JT, whenever you want. Antonio Nusa comes off the bench to score the only goal for Leipzig as they beat Bochum at home 1-0. Robo, Archer Vermeeren is reportedly on his way from Atletico Madrid. Can they kick it up a notch and challenge the season? And then Nusa, is he too raw for you or are you excited? Uh, I'm quite excited. Um... He's a game changer off the bench, yeah, right? Yeah. Like Openda and Sesco need a yeah. need a breather. Like I think, I mean, they've got a chance this season to to improve because they've still got, apart from Danny Olmo, the most of the players are still there. You know, the likes of Sesco and Openda and these sort of players. And Danny Olmo was injured half the time anyway. Yeah, right? and so, he didn't always, but he didn't always start yeah. games. So I don't think they're losing anything with Danny Olmo going. Uh, Orban got himself sent off, which is not good. Uh, but in like, the stupidest way too. Yeah, and then, then you like go and like pretend you had a cramp afterwards. Like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But but Leipzig, 
you know, they showed when they played against uh, Real Madrid in the Champions League last season over the two legs, although they lost, they were the better team. They can, on their day, be a very good side. They were inconsistent last year, didn't play on the front foot quite enough, I thought. they were uh, At times, Marco, Marco uh, Rosa got them to play a little bit too defensively. But if they play to their full potential, they'll certainly be in the top four, I think. I was tempted to ask you, can you think of a better striking duo than Openda and uh, Sesco? Others, of course, than uh, Lautaro and uh, Turam. But that's an easy question because I don't know if there are other front twos. Two's, in no, there are not too many front twos. <laughs> there you know, aren't but, too yeah, many, yeah, are there? You know, the, 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 the one that was outstanding a couple of years ago was Lukaku and uh, Lautaro Martinez. That was yeah. the best in, in, in world football at the time. Now, Take Kubo uh, scores late as Real Sociedad beat Espanyol 1-0. Gab, Mats Hummels is close to joining them as a free agent. Does he move the needle at all? So, Real Sociedad haven't looked good this year, I thought. No. Um, it's a romantic choice, if you mm. will. Like, I don't think Hummels was that bad last year. What I'm not 100%, obviously, you bring leadership and experience and a bit of grit at the back. A uh, big ego as well? You know. A big ego. I think when you move to a different mm. country, to a different reality, mm. like Homo's has been accused of having a big ego because he spoke out of turn mm. and upset Borussia Dortmund and whatever. But he does that because he knows Borussia Dortmund. He looks yes, around him, right? Yeah, yeah. He sees like Terzic does this, the club do that, does that. He's like, guys, I've been here. I've won everything. I know this league. I know this club. Mm. I'm going to speak out. When you go to La Sociedad, you're in a different reality. I would hope Hummel's an intelligent guy. I would hope he has a humility to come yeah. in and say, like, big ego, what? Like, this is a club. They've been very successful without me. I'm going to come in. I'm going to enjoy the ride. The trouble is, I've watched him over the last couple of years, and he's, well, he's, he hasn't had a lot of plays for, for a few years, but he gambles. He's a big gambler defensively. So he'll make great interceptions. You think, oh, he's, inter he's made a good interception there, and he's got in front of the forward there. Then you see when he makes the wrong decision or gambles and it, it turns against him, he's miles out of position and can be a real liability. Is I'm, that especially so true for how Real Sociedad play? It could be. So if he, he I think he, he just plays for himself at times. You know, I'm, I'm going to look good by making a bang. I'm going to win a header that you know that nobody else will win. But then if he gets beaten, then he's 30 yards out of the play, and that happened on a couple of occasions last season. Channeling his inner Sergio Ramos. Yes. <laughs>